Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a action-packed episode of Hybrid Unlimited. On this week's episode, we start off with a follow-up to the great submarine controversy of 2023, which was uh, on last week's episode or maybe the week prior. And we go through all the comments and kind of crazy feedback that we got. Don't miss it. And if you haven't already checked it out, go look at the last couple of reels Hayden and I put up. Uh, the comment section is just wild. Uh, we also kind of dive into some of the stuff that's going on with Conor McGregor, and we go down a bunch of different rabbit holes, as we always do, with God knows what political discussions and vaccines and geopolitics and all sorts of fun stuff. So you're in for a ride. And as always, don't forget to check out the Hybrid Strength app. Uh, when you sign up, you can get a week free. And with that being said, sit back relax and enjoy a very strange but very fun episode of hybrid unlimited all right well i know you think we got through the ads but actually we did want to mention that this podcast is also sponsored by the deep state the deep state the uh, deep state if you sheep didn't realize uh we are just distracting you from the real global issues because i know that most of you you know, when some sort of global catastrophe or, you know, uh, political event happens, the first thing you think is, I wonder what the guys at Hybrid Unlimited have to say about this. Now, uh, because now you know. <laughs> now you know that they, capital We are they, looking for them. Right. They want us to tell That's you right. things that are going to distract you from what's really going on. They asked us to read this little ad to distract you from the real events of the world they're organized they're intelligent and they have a plan for us and for you they don't want you to know what's really going on so don't watch the news you know if a submarine goes down or a coup happens in russia think of what's going on outside of that thing that's going on because there's something else that's going on that they don't want you to know about and who are they? And it's all... If you ask, who are they, Hayden? Well, it's the global elites, the lizard people. Yeah, but what's their names? Do they have names or, or is it... <clears throat> well, their anonymity is what makes them so powerful. <sighs> They've got it all planned out, huh? It's almost like they don't want to be found. Exactly. And uh, even this right now, you're going to listen to this and you're going to say, wait... They want you to listen to this. Exactly. Are we giving away their secrets or... Are or. we getting paid literally billions of dollars right now to do this? You might think that this is satire, but then at the same time, is that what they want you to think? And are we distracting you from what they don't want you to know by telling you about them? Is, and is that how they hide in plain sight? I Maybe think that's the real question. You should look into it yourself. Yeah. And the best way to do that is by all other um, anonymous people behind Especially if they have a mask pseudonyms. on. They don't have sources, and if they speak in generalities, you're yeah. going down the right track. And they should be on YouTube, ideally. Or Instagram. Or Rumble. Ne <laughs> Both are credible. <laughs> All three are credible, actually. <laughs> I, I, the less they cite and source, the better. As long as they speak generally, and they say they, there's a couple things they have to refer to, obviously. Central banks, vaccines, Rothschilds. You got to throw in some Clinton and some Epstein. You got yourself... The Kennedys are probably in there somewhere. Probably. But, you know, that's – they want you to say that. Or do they? Or the listeners they? will never know. That's the thing. You guys – This honestly. is sponsored by them. Yeah. Don't ask who they are. Oh, Zuckerberg. We forgot. He's in there too. Oh, right. Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Bill Gates. <clears throat> Um, oh, We're on the Bill Gates page. This is a total uh, aside. <laughs> but did you – I don't know if this is true or not, but this is what's going around the internet right now. So you know how Zuck and Elon were supposed uh, to fight? Oh, they're on. I thought – this is what I saw. This is what they are saying. They? Yeah. Might be a distraction. <laughs> but apparently uh, Elon Musk's mother kiboshed the whole thing. No, but he's training – he was training with Lex Friedman. And there's like a oh, hundred really? dudes. Isn't Lex Friedman like actually like a fairly yeah. high-level belt in jiu-jitsu? Yeah, he's jiu -jitsu? a fairly high-level belt. I don't know which one, but – he like he's trained with Zuck and Elon Musk. It's actually really funny. Did you see the two big names that were supporting either side? I've seen John Jones supporting. I think he supported Elon Musk, 
And there's a ton of people that came out for Zuck and a ton of people that came out for Elon yeah, Musk. Like Izzy, the- Izzy said he'd support Zuck. Oh, really? And then uh, George St. Pierre said he would coach. Uh, so you know why this is funny? Because if you look at the two camps, it kind of represents the same insane shit we're about to get into when we talk about the comments from last week's episode. But the people look at Zuckerberg, right? And they're like, they'll support Zuckerberg because they're in the camp where, you know, he's the censor guy and he's suppressing information and he's promoting misinformation and all this stuff. Right. And then people are supporting Elon Musk because he supposedly represents the opposite, where Elon Musk is the anti state, the anti censor, the, you know, I'm going to buy Twitter and let the people speak for themselves and all that stuff. I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but that's. When you start to see the comments, like Andrew Tate even came out and said that he would train Elon Musk because Meta, a.k.a. Facebook and Instagram, kicked Mm -hmm. him off the platform at some point, I think. Yeah, they did. Right. So, Uh, And they haven't reinstated him. Oh, okay. So He's he's only back on Twitter. Okay. Damn. So I guess Donnie Boy, he would would go with Team Musk. Yeah, but he's also – he's not on Twitter. He has – so – uh, they allowed him back on Twitter, but he wouldn't go back. They did, but he has his own app now, the like Truth Social Truthing. or whatever it's Truthing. called. Truthing. Truthing. Yeah. Is that what it's called when like doing a tweet? Yeah. He, it's, called, it's called Truthing. He turned, <laughs> he turned a, an adjective into a verb. Well, I mean, if anyone can do it, it's him. God bless you, sir. <laughs> well, guys, we had uh, a record turnout. It was like if we invited all of our friends to a party and then they invited all thousand of their friends to a party and they invited all thousand <laughs> of their friends to a party. We had a fucking party the last few days responding to some of these messages, which we have to spend at least 10 minutes reading because this is some of the most insane stuff I've ever seen in my life. I don't know about you, but the comments that came out of the post based on the submarine thing, and it all started with the post that we put up. It was a reel that George created about the submarine and the lawsuit stuff, and you guys went wild. It was it was like a, t- a turnout like we've never seen. We're going to read through some of them and some of our replies because well, we'll we've been getting George. pretty active with this, and this is just <clears throat> this is stuff I've never seen before, so... We got a couple uh, a couple minutes here to dive into this before we go into the and rest of the show. Let me show. first preface this by saying, one hundred percent of these comments are done by YouTube PhDs, who, you know, they're in this little echo chamber of like, you know how it, how it works, right? Like you watch one conspiracy video, gives you another, mm-hmm. you click that, all of a sudden your whole thing is conspiracy videos. So I think that's mostly what we're looking at here. So this this person says. The people who died on the submarine, they are actually perfectly fine. They just don't want to pay taxes anymore, so they got a private island. They, so that means they collectively bought a private island because they were all sick of paying taxes? So the people who had who have unlimited funds and generational wealth where their kids don't have to worry about anything, their kids' kids don't have to worry about anything, their kids' kids' kids don't have to worry about anything, those people— They're not paying taxes, like, you know bro. what? <laughs> they're not paying I'm, taxes to begin with. I know that about? our entire lineage is set for— all of eternity, but you know what? These taxes, they're driving me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to fake wait, our deaths wait. and go to a I private th- island? I thought they don't pay taxes. Isn't that what everybody complains about? That too. Well, that's the other end. They don't it. pay taxes, but... Also, look at this guy. This guy's calling me dumb. He goes, bro, dumb. Uh, they- let's, let's go into the waiver thing first. Guys, let's just put this to rest. Just because you sign a waiver... And I'm saying this not because I'm a lawyer, but it is because I'm married to one. (laughs) Half the people in my family are lawyers. Just because you sign a lawyer does not absolve the person of responsibility for negligence. If, If you die negligently... Even if you sign a waiver. All right, so let's just say this. You cannot legally consent to negligence. No, no. Let's say you go to a theme park, right? Let's say you go to Disney World or whatever, and when you buy that ticket, part of the terms and conditions when you go there and you pay for your entry is that, well, they're not responsible for this, that. I guarantee you that you're signing away some of your rights with some kind of waiver, no matter what you do and where you go, blah, 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 blah. If you die on a roller coaster at Disney, go up. Guess who's the, getting the sued? Lawyer. Right there. Everyone is getting sued. Disney's getting sued. Yeah. Their insurance companies are getting sued. Lawyers are incredibly crafty, and they will find somebody to sue, and they will find somebody to pay. That's why insurance companies exist. So, at this point, based on my own experiences and the anecdotal experiences of others, 
I feel like a waiver is just all it is is a deterrent that you hope when you own a business sure. that people like this uh, think you hope they think this way and they think that a right. waiver is ironclad and it's, if you sign a waiver and I chuck a 25 kilo plate across the gym and nail you in the head you 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 have no grounds to sue me for that it's like no there's a million ways around a waiver and negligence is the easiest one and here's a guy agh law shout out i know him <laughs> but he said there are ways around a waiver release given the media attention wouldn't be surprised if applicable care uh i think he meant like he's talking in like short the form insurance the carrier. applicable carrier yeah. the insurance carrier uh tenders see if you can go policies. down and find Catherine's comments she was in the middle of this long thread we had with this guy who was just saying some crazy yeah crazy just look stuff. just look for a thread that ha it could be that one no 13 could. 13 replies you're in it <sighs> could be Yep, there she is. All right. There you go. Read so this out. was talking about maritime law. So they were saying, oh, well, nobody can be sued because it happened in international waters. And this is coming from somebody who actually worked. Oh, no, this, is, this isn't her point about the maritime stuff, though. She did make another one. Oh, uh, did she? Read this one anyway. It's just so, so, okay, so she's referring or responding back to a guy uh, obviously talking about the waiver thing. You can absolutely sue when gross negligence is involved. For example, when you have a surgery, you sign multiple forms that disclose the possibility of death. But if the doctor is negligent or something was not properly disclosed before the surgery, even a risky one, you can sue. Additionally, there are tons of avenues and persons in which to sue when an incident like this happens, when multiple parties are involved. Us attorneys in this thread didn't go to law school for nothing. Yes. <laughs> You're right. She did do another one where she asked yeah. the guy no, to uh, pay. Can we find that one? Because that one's also really good because it does address the international it's under the thing. guy. Uh, I don't want to say his name on camera, but it was a longer one that we both got involved in. Uh, you can say it and then George just beep out his okay. handle. It's, I guess the point here, guys, is like everybody's fixated on waivers. Almost every one of these talks about a waiver, a waiver, a waiver. And well, it's either a waiver or these guys deserve to die because right. they were and rich. I was, I was going to say that <laughs> next. Like, I, I can't believe how, uh, how fair we were in the last episode talking about this because, like, imagine that was your partner. I don't understand why people are so fixated on the fact that because these guys had money, that they somehow deserve to die. Like. No one deserves to die like that. I, I don't know why we even have to say this. I feel silly even having to say that that's a crazy thing. M maybe it was back up at the top. Natural selection at, uh, at its finest, You're someone said. Hayden. Oh, yeah, of course. But natural selection at its finest. It's like, hey, guys. This is a natural do you know, selection. Do you know how successful all of those people were? Yeah. They had 250K to throw away on a... a oh, there you go. So a non-necessary trip. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's see. Might be at the bottom. Yeah, there you go. No, uh, but that seems short for a cat's answer was longer. I know. He commented on, on various different threads. <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, wait. What's that one? No. Oh, shit. That, that was the one where John was taking the piss out of that guy and he didn't realize. Well done, John. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why everybody was so – they're still fixated on the fact that because they could afford to do this, somehow their financial uh, success in life made it so that they deserve to die. Well, here's the thing too is like sure that one guy's a billionaire and you know the other guys – everyone on there is obviously very successful. But the assumptions made about these people who I didn't know a single one of these guys before this story and – I'm assuming the vast majority of this comment section also has no idea who these people are. And yeah. they're just like billionaire bad. Oh, wait, there's Kat saying a big thing. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, same thing. Might have been on the other. So there was no, actually thought, a couple I, of these. You, you might want to check I think it, No, I think it's on this one. Right. This is the one that's been getting the most. That one has seven replies. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is this oh, one. Oh, there yeah. we go. All right. Oh, Perfect. So this guy is saying, you know, they can't be sued because they're in international waters, blah, 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 blah. So uh, Catherine said, well, I used to work at a large maritime firm. Yes, it's very strange. Strictly speaking, jurisdiction can rest in the waters where the vessel was located, the flag which the vessel flies, or if it's a USC criminal investigation, the FBI. But 
we would also have to consider if the waiver slash agreement they signed a signed jurisdiction. In that case, it would fall under the laws of the state of the LLC. So like when you sign a contract or some kind of uh, yeah, know, it'll say if there's some sort of legal right, like if if this goes to court, if it goes to the jurisdiction right. of like you, you know, if you live in Miami Dade, you would typically right. say it's going to fall on Miami Dade County. We also have to remember that they will probably sue estates, insurance companies, etc., which are in the U.S. It's ninety nine point nine 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 percent going to lie within the U.S. Considering everything above, thank you for coming to class, and that will be <laughs> one billion dollars in tuition fees uh, for her time. <laughs> law school so <laughs> guys i i go read these comments they're pretty crazy but also kind of says something about the, the way people thought about this it's like a tragedy happens to a bunch of innocent people because one guy was negligent and then all those people deserve to die yeah. according to the internet well, thank you for the engagement and for blowing these posts up but also you're dumb you know yeah <laughs> you're dumb waivers these, don't mean these, shit it, you know they're not a thing it's it's all it is is a deterrent it's right. a deterrent that, and like i said before you hope the people that sign them believe what 90 percent of the people in this comment well, thank god believe. Right? thank god 90 percent. it's like it's like a non-compete you ever heard of non-compete laws in the u.s like sure. you can sign a non-compete agreement with your employer most states are not going to enforce them Espe even if you take yeah. them to court well there are there are rules like and this applies to m most careers it's like if you if you work at a job and you sign a non-compete yeah but your expertise and realistically only way of making money is in that same industry mm -hmm. the non-compete is invalid because you can't stop people from making money so yeah and supporting themselves and, and living right so it's like yeah if you're in fitness and you sign a non-compete and your only option is fitness outside of this job. You can't be like, sorry, dude, you signed a 32 year non-compete. I guess you're just going to yeah. be homeless. Like you can't. Most courts don't look highly on it, but no, these, these people, this was kind of crazy. I, I didn't expect people to have this kind of feedback on, on a current event like this. Like it, but you know what? It's mind blowing. There are the odd people who are successful and then all and also have these views, but I think for the most part, if you're yeah. doing real well, you're not too concerned and you don't have a lot of hatred for random billionaires that you don't know. But if you're like really struggling and you're having a hard time and you have a bad personality, those are the types of people that are making comments like that. And I'm sorry if you're a listener. Thank you for tuning in. But also maybe take a look at yourself in the mirror and ask why do i feel so angry and why do i want people to die just simply because they have money yeah. when i realistically don't know anything about them so with all that being said if you guys want to watch something that's super interesting i said it here in the comments that's right there is a there's a documentary that james cameron put out probably it was like eight or nine years ago now but he actually documents him going to the titanic mm -hmm. all of the technology that goes into these dives the the type of vessels you have to have to go down there and he document the whole story is about him going down to the deepest point on earth mm -hmm. and i didn't realize this before we watched it but it was he's the second guy ever ever in the history of humans to go down that far to that point it's called the challenger deep what did you say uh he got a day job as a yeah so in the documentary he was like obsessed with the ocean so he always wanted to do stuff underwater a lot and i didn't realize this but i've actually seen a couple of his movies that were all about the water i watched the last avatar which you know as far as like a movie goes you know it was fine whatever but entertaining he, he perfected underwater cgi which was crazy the way he did it and it all makes sense after watching the documentary because the guy's been obsessed with the ocean since he was a little kid so in the mm -hmm. documentary he was like i want to go explore the ocean that that's what i want to do as like my thing right but he figured he has to make money so he's gonna he said he's gonna get a day job as a movie director <laughs> and oopsie daisies he became the most successful movie director of all right. time so he which is so annoying his money which is so annoying because it's not even it's like his second passion, which is a privilege to have fun. one passion you can pursue, but to be like James Cameron of directing is also like really in, actually interested in the ocean. Yeah, well, imagine Avatar, being James like Cameron. Israel Adesanya, and you're like, yeah, I know I just tune people up and make it look easy in in the inside the cage, but actually my uh, my real passion is horticulture. So 
I just, uh, I, just that dude I just gets high on the internet. I just beat, probably is. <laughs> I just beat people he's up. He's going nuts. Does it? Is he? Yeah, he's a big stoner. He's got really? a, yeah. He posts it all the time on his stories. He has a big volcano vape. He gets high with all the time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, he's an odd dude. Well, good for him. Yeah, yes, he's, he I guess he, it. he's doing well in everything. He's doing great. So, so more power to you. Yeah, uh, but go watch it. The I think the doc's called Deep Sea Challenge, and you could see the whole it story, is, yeah. the engineering, and how much number one, how much money it costs. You know, he was saying that that feed ship that took him from Australia, so he had to have the whole thing built in Australia, custom made. I mean, I can't imagine how much money this whole thing costs. But he said the ship alone cost $35,000 a day just to have it there. Insane. Yeah, not cheap. So, you know. How long is the, the journey to get out to the point? Well, when they did it, they basically built this thing and then went out. They, they took the boat out, started testing it, right? So they tested it, went a little further, tested a little further, fixed it, tested a little further, went really, really deep. And now they're like, all right, we're going to drop you off. I mean, it's not, it was not a short journey. There is something funny also about like there is so much science and complexity and technology that goes into doing something like this. But I also find it hilarious on the other side of things, how kind of like primitive, even at the highest level, like what James Cameron's doing, mm -hmm. some of their operations are, right? So you, what do you mean? So they spent incredible tens of millions if not hundreds of millions of dollars sure. to accomplish this project right and the thing that shoots the thing back up to the surface oh, yeah. is the fact that they just they the have weight weights stack. on the sub and they have a little button and then it drops the weights and right. then and then it the th thing is just buoyant enough that it just shoots back up to the surface in like the documentary they go through it they're like this is the most critical basically the most critical piece and it's the most for the, primitive piece too. and it's like it's just a button. It's a little, it's a little like up and down switch. <laughs> it was like drop. And then it's literally like a weight stack. Well, it even, looks like a weight even stack. Even the way that it gets there, machine. right? Even yeah, the way just, that it gets there, it just sinks. It just goes down. Yeah. It's just they, they it's, sink it's them down. It's floating on the surface with yeah. these big bags. They yeah, release yeah. the bags and then the thing just falls. And you're like, this is so simplistic. This one part of it, right? Yeah. But it's like, it's funny how those two worlds like kind of interact. Well, they, they engineered it in a way that like, it was the, the 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 piece that he was sitting in, and why that's interesting to look at is when you compare it to this Ocean Gate thing. They built they built something they thought was innovative and it was carbon fiber, and the guy thought it was, you know, technologically more sound. And then when you see James Cameron do it, it's like, no, we're building a fucking solid steel ball that they pressure tested in a lab all the way down to thirty six thousand mm. feet. And if if you get a chance to finish watching the documentary after this, you'll yeah, see well. it. You'll see once they get down there, that's when he has the Rolex. So Rolex was part of that expedition. They right. wanted to test their ultra deep sea watch. And it was on the outside of the. Yeah, he right? put it. The, he put the watch on the mechanical arm of the of the watch. And now you can get on the what? Are the mechanical arm of the sub. So there was a oh, mechanical okay, arm of the okay. sub and you only see it for a couple seconds in the documentary, but you see it. The watch is there ticking fine. He makes a little comment about it. And then, uh, you know, they show his, but they actually modeled an entire line of Rolexes after that. Now they even have one that's 36,000 feet rated wow. that you can buy straight from the store. Wow. A little overkill. It's like 50 millimeters. Yeah, 50. That's like my prop loft is... Uh, I got to show you. 4, 000, came out with a 4, new one today. meters. Oh, really? Today? Yeah. yeah. Today. They just released a new one. Wow. It's Good cool looking. Is it different yeah. from the... Yeah, it's the a little one? different. Oh, I'll show you later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You want to scroll through a few more of these and just see what... Yeah, we, uh, we, <laughs> we hit the highlights. But if you have a minute and you want to see just how people think about this kind of stuff... Uh, it's man, this it's, is it's crazy, weird that people crazy are stuff. that a lot of people just think that these people were dumb. And it's like you don't reach that level of success from being unintelligent. You know, it's no, like you're obviously I, not done dumb. Sorry. Uh, but you're you know, you put a certain amount of trust into the these people like you're you're paying. You know, if, if you go to New Surratt and you buy a thousand dollar steak, you're not worried about food poisoning right no, you assume yeah, that because you're in a certain it. establishment and you're paying a certain amount of money that you're 
going to have a certain experience. And I'm sure that these people thought that was like the same when you get on a plane. Like think about think about an aircraft, right? Like we take this for granted nowadays because it's mm-hmm. so commonplace. But, you know, we got to jump on this in a second. But uh, an airplane is a gigantic pressurized moving vehicle that shoots you through the air at close to the speed of sound across the planet. And we take for granted the fact that that thing works every single time. But there was a couple instances. They just released a new jet, uh, Boeing did a few years ago, called mm. 787 Max 8. And they, there was a, a systems systems issue, basically, that made the plane think it was doing something it wasn't, caused the plane to crash like a couple times I'll in a row. I watched the dock on that. Straight down into the ground, mm. right? And it's like, I didn't see these comments when that happened, right? Nobody was out there claiming that the the the... the the, what the global elites were distracting them from something really going on. They don't want you to know about it. Right. And now all of a sudden, because a sub goes down, it's so crushed what, what, underwater. Why do you think no one thought that about a, the plane, but everyone thought this about the sub? Is it because of I could who was say, on board? I could say anything. What does it matter, right? The, you know, a, they, when you go watch the documentary on MH317, which was the Malaysia jet that just disappeared, which is one of the craziest mysteries of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, eventually they found some pieces of it, but... Um, Supposedly, or is that what they want you to think? That's what they want you to think. Like, they also claimed... They also claimed that, and um, this was in the documentary that came out on Netflix, but there was theories that the plane was, you know, brought down over the Indian Ocean because there was a group of scientists on board. And then when the other Malaysian jet was shot down by Russian separatists over Ukraine, there was another group of people that were saying, well, there was, look at all the people that were on board. They were there for, they're connecting all these dots that aren't there. And it's like, you know what, here's my thought process about stuff like this. I, I'm a fan of Occam's razor. The Sim- simplest. Simplest explanation yeah. is most likely the the truth, right? So when something like this happens, what's the simplest explanation? You have a guy that was, you know, not necessarily following the rules, going against the grain of, of what's established in the, the had, deep sea community. Had great intentions. Right, right. He wasn't going out. He, he was clearly in love with the ocean, just like all these other guys, right? But mm-hmm. he didn't approach it the same way James Cameron did. Great, Maybe great he didn't silver have the hair also, eh? Huh? Great head of hair, silver, oh, yeah, silver yeah. hair there. He's doing great. All right. <laughs> Jealous. What a waste. Uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> what a waste of a haircut. Could have, could have been an astronaut, that guy. You see he that looked, face? He looked like one, actually. I know. Yeah, uh, yeah but it's, I, I don't... Why, it's, it, to me, it's such a leap of logic to assume that, you know, something happened when there's no proof of it of it happening that way, especially when it's kind of an extraordinary claim, right? The simplest explanation here is that he didn't follow the rules. He didn't test the thing. Went down to a depth after multiple times, carbon fiber cracks... Then it well, and he not only didn't follow the rules, he was repeatedly warned that him not following the rules was putting everybody's lives involved in jeopardy. Sure. And, you know, pushed forward with it. And you that's know. but you know what, when you're doing something at the very extreme of of anything, you know, if you're going to space or yeah. flying an airplane or powerlifting, right? Like if you're going to squat a thousand pounds like. There is a lot that can go wrong. Oh. You know, uh, I'm sure our listeners can uh, empathize with that. You guys know that, you know, you do anything to the to the limit of what you're capable of or what the, uh, a machine is capable of. Well, you know, if, if there's a weak link in the operation, something's going to fail. If it can fail and there's something wrong and there's an opportunity for it to fail, it's going to fail. Like, you know, if you have a, a, a meniscus that's just been getting chipped away at, chipped away at the stress and, you know, you finally get to that max out squat and you hit the hole real hard and your meniscus tears like it's not like the global elites did that to distract people you know you you you, you there was a, it's like you're a machine the human body's a machine just like a submarine's a machine if there's a weak point you know one little piece of that thing could have just been a little bit under stress multiple times in a row and then the whole thing fails yeah i mean it's it's that's 100 percent true and they're they weren't subjecting themselves to regulatory bodies and they're using international waters i think as a way to subvert a lot of the you know criteria for crafts similar to them uh 
you know, and they did two successful missions prior to that. And then, you know, who knows what it, what they were doing? Like, I don't know what the protocol is when a, a machine goes down and how much testing on its viability to repeat the mission happens yeah. in between. Like, in, in a high level James Cameron sub, I assume they're doing a lot seeing like, you know, what forces and what damage was done to the thing from doing this, whatever. You know, for all we know, these guys just were like, oh, we're successful. We're going to do another one. We're success. And it could have been taking wear and tear over those first two trips. And then this happens. And yeah, you know, what this you know. reminds me of is uh, the, the the Columbia story and the Challenger story. The Challenger story is a little bit more similar. So the Challenger was like a space shuttle. That mm -hmm. was one of the original five that they created or six that they created, whatever it was. And Is that the it, one that blew up in Cape Canaveral. Yeah, well, it blew up at the launch sites. You know, they were waiting to launch it and waiting to launch it. And I guess it was really cold the night before, and there was a, like a small, very, very small systems failure, which led to the entire thing blowing up during the launch cycle. And uh, you know, it's like, what do you? What would you? Would you point at a disaster like that and make these same accusations? And if not, why? Right. What's the difference? It's like it's got to be who's on board, right? The astronauts right? weren't billionaires, so if they were billionaires, would you make these kind of claims? Like, no. I hope not. That's fucked up. I've actually seen, the, and this is funny, and I'm not saying there's any validity to this, but I've seen some. Uh, I can't remember who the comedian was, but he did a whole bit on like who they actually send up to space, and they're like, it's not our best and brightest. It's not the scientists who are engineering the thing. It's like, it's these corn fed motherfuckers from the middle of the country. <laughs> you know, those oorah guys, like, yeah. you know, they, they, we throw them in there. They're all hyped up. You know, it's like, it's like the, the human was he, was he chimp serious? version. Well, he was a comedian, so oh, okay. he's making, he's making a joke. Right. But I feel like the people that go up on the, on the space shuttles and, and like, they're like badasses. But not like the like football players. No, they're like fearless. Yeah. Capable. But also scientists. A lot of them that are up there are scientists. Yeah. Do you, do you remember that guy Hatfield who went up for yeah, Canada yeah. and he was like playing the yeah. guitar up there and doing all this stuff? He became like a national treasure. But he wasn't a super intelligent guy. Yeah. I think they all have to be geniuses. But, you know, maybe some are a little bit more. There was a guy that brought a, a, a an ape suit up there once. Really? Started fucking around on the space station in an ape suit. Just... 90 percent like 90 percent of your time up there's got to be so boring oh yeah i mean just sitting around in a little <laughs> yeah. thing like floating and like what do you do dude just play cards you ever have high speed internet probably the connection's not great that uh, rules out a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> i don't know hopefully they get netflix up there you know yeah well anyways guys uh if you don't have uh the this message already go read the comments on this because you'll, you'll laugh for at least five minutes before you think these people yeah, are yeah, yeah. check out my terrible. page or check out uh marcus's we're both uh on the post so oh, sorry, very man. interesting yeah so next up uh on our our magical journey through the world of current events is uh, our good friend mr connor mcgregor this just happened this is such a pivot, but it's just something that such a pivot <laughs> yeah. is is something that I wanted to talk about. And I think it's so yeah, we didn't get a chance to last week. Yeah. Um, so everyone once heard this woman has accused him of rape. He had quite a night at that game, final game, Miami Heat uh, playoff game. He actually I'd like to first talk about the mascot because people have made that a big thing. There's a big deal about how Conor McGregor was overzealous and he injured this guy who went to the hospital. Okay. Wasn't he there to do this? Wasn't he yeah, supposed to this was to This was all a guy? thing that, that this was part of the thing to promote his, I don't know, his spray. Oh, uh, tidal spray? Yeah, I, which I guess is like a numbing agent. Yeah. So you spray it on yourself when you have an injury, you... Right. Yeah, so he's been promoting it for a while. So Whatever. The, the punch was there, was the, the marketing stunt. Right. So he punched the guy, jokingly, guy fell down, I guess he punched him, and the guy got hurt. Now, the public perspective of this, I felt, was like a little bit ridiculous. There were Conor like, McGregor knocks out innocent mascot that yeah that was whole agreed thing. To do so. Oh, he went over the top. He was probably all fucked up. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is what happened, okay? I'm going to tell you the real story, and this is what they want you to hear. 
<laughs> he punched the guy. The guy got a little bit hurt. The whatever organization it was, whether it was the Miami Heat or the NBA or whoever the whoever was responsible for that stunt, they didn't want to be held liable. So when the guy told them he was hurt, they said, "Okay, well, let's take you to the hospital to make sure." You're okay. And guess what? The guy went to the hospital and he didn't have any injuries. They gave him pain medication and he went home. Okay? You didn't he didn't This have guy agreed to this, correct? For sure. And you know what? But that's besides the point. Right. My point is he didn't actually injure this guy. If you go to the hospital and they give you ibuprofen and then they send you back home, you're fine, right? You just got an ouchie. They sent you there because they didn't want to get, get sued. sued. That's it. That's the end of the story. So yeah, everybody he should have signed a waiver. Every so just fine. I'm sure NBA he would did. have been fine if they had <laughs> signed a waiver. I, I don't think anything came of it. <laughs> but you know, relax with all that shit. He did exactly what he's supposed to do. It's like he doesn't know how hard to punch the squishy nose of the mascot. He just punched it. Dude, this guy's used to like punching through people's heads. You yeah. know, as if he's trying to make a hole. He probably pulled back. 80% and it was still enough to make the guy go ow so they sent him to the hospital alright so here's, here's the question though what people don't realize that make a big deal out of stuff like this is they're doing the exact same thing that in the alternate situation when they don't like the people that the thing happened to like everybody feels bad for the mascot porn is a mascot but guess what the news was talking about for like hey, 48 what? hours well, straight all these people would not feel bad for the mascot if they knew how much this mascot gets paid. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you guys Six go Google that? Grand a year, guys. It's uh, this right. guy's killing it. Yeah, the guy's fine. The guy's fine. <laughs> yeah. But it's so ironic because all we talked about for days and made this thing successful was Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor punching a mascot. Conor McGregor accused of raping somebody, even though there's very little evidence of such. Two in one day. Right. So two things happened in one day, and what is the world talking? Talking about Conor McGregor and what is Conor McGregor a businessman all he's doing is promoting himself so yeah the guy got a little bit hurt and thank you that was very central the way you did that George <laughs> and all of a sudden what's in the news it's just McGregor it's literally all the people are talking about and no one can stop him because the news cycle just goes nuts and it's over nonsense it's over a pre-planned stunt and the second one but nobody was talking I about don't the global know. elites at that point. Of course they weren't. They don't. They Of course. Why do you think they had Conor McGregor punch the mascot? Because that was the day that uh, Jeffrey Epstein's Hillary Clinton emails came out. <laughs> why does billionaire McGregor? Why well, he, he gets a pass. Yeah. Why is he? Why is he not part of the lizard people organization? Who says he is? But the submarine people the are. Submarine people are. Are part of the lizard people, people organization? Die or or some <laughs> people? Actually, the comment section got oh to the point God. where the lizard, the, the the submarine implosion underwater was a distraction from. There was like some guys started rattling off a bunch of stuff, and then finally, just now, like right when I was training before the the podcast, some guys started talking about how they don't want you to look into the history of the Federal Reserve because. They didn't want the Federal Reserve, or they did want the Federal Reserve, but they, there was another group of unidentified. Central bank. Yeah, well, which is same, same. yeah, which is a central bank, right? They didn't want in the U.S. specifically the Federal Reserve because there was a group fighting it, but then they wanted it to get rich. I don't listen, guys, uh, and specifically the gentleman I was just commenting with. I'm genuinely curious who they are because. As somebody, actually, as two people who both went to school and got their degree in economics, That's you right. wouldn't know it, but we did. <laughs> There's actually a good reason for a central bank. And can, can we say what that is? They have two things that they do. They control unemployment and they also control inflation, right? So they want to keep unemployment low and they want to keep inflation low. And for people who don't know how the mechanism works, they control the supply of money, which... Dum, dum, dum. Which and guys, is while you guys are all squabbling over political parties and saying left versus right, you know Biden's bad, orange man good, lizard person bad, <laughs> uh, non lizard person good. They all vote to spend your money. Mm -hmm. I hate to tell you this, 
But if you go look back at every budget that's ever been passed, that's raised our federal uh, deficit by trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, left, right, gay, straight, pronoun, no pronoun, they love guns, they hate guns. It's all one big club and you're not part of it. Yeah. Thank you, George Carlin. But Jesus <laughs> Christ, I, I oh, that, this, was, that is George Carlin. Uh, right. That was his <laughs> yeah. famous thing. And it's yeah, like it's true. more applicable than ever. And you just it's like I don't even know how we're getting here. But with the, the this ridiculous argument, I, I'm an independent. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think the whole system here is fucked. I don't care if you're left or right, but there's this clear and it came out every one of these stories it comes out in because you can see the political leanings of people and where they believe and what they don't believe. And, you know, the one side versus the other side. And it's like this insane tribalism. But we're not, everybody's missing the fact like, OK, I asked this one guy, who are they? Quote unquote, they. I, I'd love to know because there is a history know, behind it. If you don't know, I can't explain it to you, dude. You got to do your own research. On what, from a guy on YouTube or, yep. or like an Instagram post? Like, sorry, you need sources. But if you guys are really of the political persuasion, just go look at your elected officials' voting records. They all vote for the same garbage, mm -hmm. they're all being paid by the same people. Maybe not Orange Man. Maybe Orange Man is. I don't know. Maybe Biden is. He's one maybe, of the. Maybe Biden is. I don't at know. At least Orange Man funded the majority of his campaign. Yeah, but he still raises a ton of money. They all continuously. They all do. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I'm curious. I would love to but see how if there was records. Was it of, when Orange Man came out and said, they were like, "Yeah, but you do X, Y, and Z to evade tax." He goes, "Yeah." Everyone does. That's because I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> it was. He, you know what I loved about him and I still love about him and as insane as he is and as, you know, probably going to jail as he is. But I hope, I hope not. Well, just I for just comedy's want, sake. Exactly. I, like, I want yeah. the humor to keep on. That's like, why, same reason why I don't want, want Andrew Tate and his right, brother to go to jail. Sure. jail. I want... I, it's hilarious. Is, dude, I wake up and there's a thousand Andrew Tate memes and clips and, and he's whatever. He just leans, uh, yeah but and trump the, the like, trump so thing right like the tax thing like guys if you've ever paid your own taxes I promise there's nothing more demoralizing than paying the u.s government taxes just to watch them waste it on i don't know another missile or like a military base in fucking uh, failed, south sudan failed wagner coup Ooh, Ooh. that Ooh, that you know what? <laughs> I think that made its way into the comment section too. People it thought did. that that coup over the weekend, which, wow, I'm not smart enough to even touch that. So Jesus Christ, uh, let's let's stay on the surface. Yeah, it was. We'll I was excited. I was. I was. We were watching the news. I had the coffee going. We were going crazy, thinking, "Wow, this is really going to happen." That I thought we were going to see the ultimate global title fight. Yeah, of all time, Wagner versus Putin. And then, Dude, and then seemingly it didn't look good for old. Uh, I mean, John Rudy? seemed to think otherwise when we asked him That's about right. it. But that was a really weird situation. You know, it's, it you was know. weird how quickly they backed off, though. Well, I think you know, I think John said this, too, but they probably just went straight for his family and they're like, you know, I know you want to do this. And by all means, we're not going to stop you. But I just got to let you know, your kid's toothbrush is yellow. <laughs> And uh, they yeah. didn't make their bed this morning, so let's just keep that in mind. Damn. Before we get all crazy here, you know? Yeah. It's pretty compelling. That'll shut you down. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe take a vacation in Belarus. I, we don't know what the fuck's going on over there, but the news was wild. That was insane to watch that happen. It was a very entertaining week in general. With that, but what was that distracting us from? Hunter Biden. Getting a slap on right. the wrist. <laughs> that, oh. that was an argument. Oh, yeah, that was one of the guy's arguments that, well, you didn't see the Hunter Biden. I was like, no, I saw it. You I know also what? don't really care. Listen, wh whatever side of, of politics you're right. on or whether you're in, in the middle or whatever, to see those that WhatsApp conversation, did you look at that? It is no. pretty wild. No. He, he, this is basically. Is this, gonna, you're uh, saying Hunter Biden? Had yeah, a, had, yeah. So Hunter Biden speaking to a China, yeah, pull up the WhatsApp conversation. Uh, he's basically he's speaking to a Chinese official, mm -hmm. right? He's very clearly saying, "You owe, you need to pay us money, and if you don't by a certain point, 
I'm going to swing the big dick of the United States. My father is sitting beside me. I, my ability to hold a grudge forever and the entire weight of the U.S. is, is basically. Oh, look here. Yeah, if you if you can find the screenshot, it's like literally. Oh, wait, they just. He's maybe go to images and see if you can find the. I think he did. The what's oh, up? Fox News definitely has it. It's insane though. He's it's literally, you know, the son of the president being like, "I have the mm-hmm. weight of the United States behind me. And if you don't, is. if you don't, do what I want you to do. I'm going to use." Uh. The so, the U.S. Yeah, to to do whatever oh, look, I have there, to there, do. There. It's White House hammered over Hunter Biden text message. It is wild when you read it. It's like it's very transparent what he's saying. Like he's he's speaking look, sort of, yeah. you know, in a way where which it, he used his father's name to demand a payment and apparently threaten a Chinese. I'm sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand, and that means tonight. No, it gets crazier, though. Oh, th- read this part, Anne Z. It says, Anne Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I'll make certain that the... That between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows, my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will not... That you will regret. That you will regret not following my direction. I'm sitting here waiting for the call with my father. Dude, I mean, hey, guy. Yikes. You're involving all of us now at this point, right? Yeah. You're basically telling... You're telling China you're going to wage war against them if they don't pay you your weird back end. In the midst of a horrible addiction, our solely his own, have no collection to anybody in his family. I was saying, you know what? I think that the I think both sides have a point. Like this kid, not kid, he's a grown man, right? But clearly, like he's like a fuck up, loves, crack at his bath salts or whatever. Loves getting high. Clearly hasn't like got his shit together, but he's smart enough to use his dad's position to like get money. For, you know what? That's probably the tip of the political iceberg as far as weird think, shit going on out there. But don't involve me, right? Yeah, you're involving man. me at this point. You're, you, you're involving all of us. We're, oh, yeah, we're here yeah, in the United sure. States, and you're, you're just talking to some random guy in China, though. Businessman, random. He said it was the head of the China, China Harvest Fund. Does the Chinese political party not control all of that? Well, sure. If you're messing with... I don't think we're the, going to war with them over this, though. That seem, that would seem a little... But it, just throwing the weight of the United States behind your statement is so unbelievably I'm not defending irresponsible. Him. I just don't think it would lead to a war. Whether it would or wouldn't, just you can't use that chip, right? Yeah. You know I know. I mean? Listen, it, I think it's all a fair... Either way. I don't want to get... I, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to... We're straight into political waters. You know. Well, I honestly, maybe might, might as well clip this. We'll probably get fucking ten million views. But yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, but, but, but you like, can't you can't just criticize old man. You can't just criticize old man because of this, and not also criticize orange man, right? Like you right. can't say like, well, that guy's bad. My side's, you know, completely defend. Like no, dude. Like I also listened to like. That's fucked. That's terrible. Like, whatever. You know, you yeah. go hang him up by his legs. Fine, go do it. I don't give a shit about him. But you all, I also listened to a thing today. Literally, this is public record as part of this Trump case. I heard this. Where but, but tell, talk he's about it. talking to somebody writing his memoir, the memoir of somebody in he's, his he's office. He's kind of laughing about how he should, he's have, like, he should have declassified it, but he didn't. Right, right. So he's oh, like, looking oh, like, through all these documents. He's like, look, this is incredible. I found this thing. <laughs> and look at this document. This is something Millie presented to me. It's huge. It's, 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 it's this. He literally starts showing this random author or something, like these highly classified attack plans on Iran that he took from the old look, White it House. Look, it, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. This is the military. They presented it to me. And he's like, this is still classified. It's a secret. And like, you could hear in the recording, and I think the reason this recording leaked is it became part of the evidence admitted as part of his trial that's about to happen, this right. re- classified records thing. It's and it's like, good. it's like, the Hunter Biden thing's, to me, that's pretty terrible. If that, 
this all this is true. It seems like it is. But you, the can't, char- yeah, like, you, you can't, can't just you, criticize this and not look at Orange Man and be like, whoa, that's classified battle plans on Iran. That seems, uh, man, why'd you do that? But yeah. And laugh about it. They were laughing about oh, it. Oh, 100%. And, like, <laughs> My whoa. whole thing is like, dude, they're all terrible. They're all terrible. So if your thing is like, you're, it, it's almost like the. Um, oppression competition right that goes on in the united states it's like who's sure. the most oppressed and who should you know, it's like it doesn't matter it's like everyone should just be trying to do the best that they can these people are all terrible all of and them left you, right you, orange when, green when you vote you need to understand that these people they're all playing the same game right so they're like they're not representing your interests for the most part Right, no, they're like representing they're, their own pockets. their own interests, and maybe sometimes some of their interests align with yours. And if you're voting that way, then that makes sense. But it's like, dude, they're all terrible. They're all doing yeah. crazy things. They're all know, abusing their power. People get into arguments like defending politicians. It's like you put up you put up a funny meme about this the other day where they were like, you and I were the ones defending like. <laughs> yeah. The people on the sub, and it's just like that poor kid waiting for somebody <laughs> to like give him a high five, <laughs> like the dugout. And it's like it's the same thing with politicians. Like I think you're a moron for having a political discussion, thinking that you are you defending whoever this whatever your politician is. You think that they actually care, or like they're the the feeling you have toward them is reciprocal because it should be right. In in theory, politicians represent you and I as as their constituents. We're supposed to vote them in, blah 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 blah. And you th- in that situation, if that was accurate, that means they would actually care about you. They would care about your interests and the things mm-hmm. that are best for you and your life and your family. But they don't. They care about the people that are paying them. So like. Why do I not like paying taxes? Why does Trump not like paying taxes? Probably the same reason, because every elected politician is getting a fat check from Lockheed Martin every time their campaign comes calling, and they're going to do what Lockheed Martin wants. So instead of our money going toward rebuilding our schools and paying our teachers more money, missile. For sure. You can you can even make that a simpler argument and be like, how come when I drive to the gym, my car gets buried in tire ending potholes, but six point two million dollar billion dollars billion was spider bridge was oopsies. Oh, yeah. That overseas. Too. It's like I was going to say spider oh, bridge was what spider bridge. Well, uh, what's that? It's the bridge being built downtown here. It's like cost like six billion dollars. Also too much. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one that's got the oh, yeah. arc thing? Spider Bridge. Going? I, I didn't even know what that was. And I saw that and I looked at it and I said, that's going to cost too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no idea until this point that that's what that was. Yeah, but I that's drove it. by it the other day with like B. You could have just built, how about normal bridge? Solve the problem. Maybe don't build a spider bridge. Maybe build normal bridge. I, I was even confused looking at that thing. I couldn't tell what was what was being built and what was supporting what was being built. And I assume they cost Doesn't similar matter. amounts of money. Doesn't they have matter. those iron structures just holding up well, they, well, we're paying the that. thing because the other arc isn't built yet. And you know what you know where you know where you don't find potholes? Germany, Dubai. Never saw a pothole there. You can drive on the roads. People follow the rules. Norway, Switzerland. Oh, they're socialists. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm Canadian. No, I'm just saying. Like, I'm a. We're we're like military socialists in our country. Like, we yeah, we, yeah. we we spend uh, our tax dollars, and now it's a ridiculous federal deficit that's just supporting gobbledygook. And which was if Trump would have followed through on it, that would have been the best thing that he followed through on from his campaign promises. If he could have done it, what's that? Cutting back on our ridiculous military spending all around the world and closing down bases and blah, 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 blah. But I bet there was only one guy who really tried to do that in the last like seven years. Didn't end well for him. Who? JFK. He was That's not right. a fan of the military industrial establishment. And our, if you listen to the podcast that Rogan did with, with his RFK? Uh, nephew, yeah, RFK, who's jacked, by the way. So funny that that's always something that comes up because is like I think the main platform for him now is 
Well, him versus yeah. Hotez is like the big thing now. It's like right. the fat guy who's in charge of health in America. <laughs> versus, is that him? Yeah. Oh, versus, I didn't know versus, who that was. Well, he's he's a professor who works at a high level in healthcare, and but the he's thing fat. that was kind of he is fat. Well, like he's a regular out of shape, right? Fifty year old guy, you know, and he he's getting some undue attacks like some sure. unwarranted attacks against him like people are showing up at his house now since oh. this thing's resurfaced and you know they're, they're, it, i don't i don't like that shit but the clip that was kind of like that that got people riled up was one from three years ago that's now resurfaced since the rfk podcast on jre where hotez was saying Oh, you know, like I, I, I'm a, I'm a junk foodaholic. And he goes, wait, what do you mean? You are like the guy at the high one, like one of the highest levels who's prescribing how we should eat and giving all these recommendations. And mm. it kind of seems bizarre for somebody in your field to also behave this way personally, knowing all that, mm. you know, and, and he like dug kept going in on him being like well what do you mean what do you mean you're a junk food holic he goes who was interviewing him rogan oh so he was on but this was like three show. years ago but it's resurfaced now it's become a big thing because of the rfk yeah. interview that rogan did mm -hmm. and then hotez uh tweeted against him like in an anti-vax way and there was a whole thing so yeah Basically, this guy doesn't really exercise. He eats a bunch of junk food. You know, he's he he's living in a way that's been proven. You know that if you not be healthy during the whole COVID thing, it was like what what's the most helpful thing? It's like living well, eating well, exercising, doing all these things. Right? That's you know the people who are morbidly obese were at the highest risk yeah, for yeah. you know really not crazy things to do. for dying from COVID. And so he really he kind of grilled him on this and the guy didn't really have any answers. His whole thing was basically kind of like, I know what the right thing is to do, but I don't do it. And it's like, well, you don't really practice what you preach. It kind of seems ridiculous that you're the guy sure. espousing all this stuff about health, but you're yourself not healthy yeah. by traditional means. That became a whole thing. But, um, you know. And now they want they want those two guys to debate. Did you see that? Yeah, I mean, or, why RFK not? And, yeah, and it's I get it. Why Hotez doesn't want to do it because he's basically just walking into a firestorm. Like, oh, for sure. You, I mean, he's gonna. If there was a way to have a moderator that wouldn't let it get out of hand in some perfect world, you yeah, know, that would have to be the case. I don't know who the right person is to do that, but I also don't think you should let but ideas is, just float out there and not explore them. You know, like it's I think it's worth discussing stuff like that. I I've been vaccinated. You know, I've fucking all the vaccines you're supposed to get as a kid. I got the covid one, like not because I have some uh, belief in it one way or the other. It's just same. I got the hood one. I got the hood one. Johnson and Johnson, oh, one man. shot, get her done, get her done, get her. Yeah, I, I did the, whatever. I just honestly, I, I was just I hate like, to say I, it, but I just did it because I wanted to travel. Like, same. I was like, I. It was gonna I, be really difficult to travel without it. So I had like, to go to Dubai, right. so I was like, I can't yeah. fly unless I get this thing. I yeah, do it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I got this. But you know what? Whatever they're gonna put in me, I think I can survive it. I don't care either way. I'm yeah. going to be all right. And I was. Some people, this is, you know, some people that I, I see on the internet pretty often, like it's like they're hill to die on now. And like, I get it. Like there's probably a bunch of scientists that can, should, can debate it, whatever. But I find it very funny that some of the people I see, especially in the fitness community that are very anti-vax are also you're putting you're injecting bathtub drugs into right. your body <laughs> it's like, but you don't trust i the think thing. you've taken bathtub trend from china so let's not get all moral on spike proteins and fauci lying here because you know and also i think you i've know seen what? you do worse and also i don't know if most people know this but the fitness community it's not healthy. Like the high-level fitness community, <laughs> yeah. people who are doing real well, 
guess what? All the people who do the best in like music, acting, modeling, fitness, they're all doing the same thing, okay? So what's that? Cocaine. Ooh. So got people are going out to like parties in fitness industry, you know, and they're promoting all the, these healthy you know, living experiences and they're saying <laughs> oh, okay. the vax is bullshit and whatever. It's and it's like, like they dude, also I saw you get drunk as hell and do cocaine. And also you're taking bathtub drugs, <laughs> you know, for performance enhancement. And it's like, and you don't trust this one thing. It's like, fine, but they, they don't trust the stuff that was literally made. In a, at least that shit's sterile. He, yeah, you don't know anything about the other stuff that you're taking, but the, you know, it's like the vax, you know, was it? I, I, I don't, to be determined. I just don't know. Yeah, I, I, just don't, I think know. it's fine to say that. We don't know. We don't know. And if, like, I, if I had the option to travel and not take it, I would have not taken it. Sure. But I didn't think it was a huge deal for me to take it so I could travel. And yeah. it wasn't. So it's like. Yeah, it's just it's I find it very funny, and it, which is a theme that I think we touched on a ton during this show. It's like, where do people draw the line? Like mentally, where do you draw the line? What's your line of arbitrary demarcation when it comes to judgment mm. in the fitness world? I find it really funny because you're willing to take all these very untested performance enhancing drugs off of websites that almost make you want to giggle. <laughs> and you're also willing to literally take psychedelic. A lot of these people that are out there espousing like they're enlightened and, you know, they're teaching other people with their little master classes and all this stuff. Like they literally talk about taking psychedelic drugs every day. Mm. It's like, well, did you test that? Like, would you know what the effects of taking psychedelic drugs are every single day or, or consistently? Like, no. So now a bunch of people on the Internet use this hypothetical they – to start spreading information and talking points about this and that. And then all of a sudden the, the world of vaccines is suddenly called into question, which I'm not smart enough to have some profound opinion on, but I think it's pretty well proven that a lot of the vaccines that were developed in the last hundred years, polio and measles and whooping, you know, all this stuff that's mm -hmm. prevented a lot Small of deaths, pox, chicken pox, there's a pretty good scientific background for it. Now, maybe this last one wasn't, but I don't know if this is a reason to discredit the entire world of science and, and medicine. No, well, here's the thing. It's like you can have a problem with the COVID vaccine, but sure. also appreciate the efficacy of all polio. the vaccines that have done. <laughs> yeah. How about polio was a huge thing in like India and now they have no polio. Spanish flu. Have Huge you seen, problem. dude? I don't. I don't even think that half of our listeners even know what, like, what the presentation of polio looks like. And if you're one of those people, Google it. It's unbelievably. Doesn't it cause your sad. diaphragm to stop working, so you end up in an iron lung? Does that, that's that's what I'm thinking of, right? George, will you pull this up? Just pull up a person with polio. You don't even have to know what the inner workings. Just the the. Just what people oh, look like when whoa. they have it is oh so sad. And yeah, terrible. the iron lung too. Oh my god! Yeah, it, it just attacks your whole Jeez system. It's Christ. terrible. It's sad. It's like yeah, that whoa. was basically eliminated because of a vaccine. So it's like there is efficacy to vaccines, one hundred percent. It's like you don't have to like if you don't agree with the COVID vaccine, you don't have to disagree with all vaccines but isn't that don't you think that's kind of symptomatic of the way people think now where it's all or nothing yes. i don't agree with this one thing therefore the entire field of thought surrounding this this thing doesn't doesn't jive with me like so people won't get their kids vaccinated against anything anymore it's like i'm sorry but science would disagree with you yeah i mean dude if i have a kid he goes to school Get, give your kids the chicken pox vaccine. I don't want that kid. You ever seen that stuff? Yeah. It's horrible. I had it. I, Did I, you? I have a scar to this day. Oh, no you shit. Have you seen it? In no. the front of my hairline? There's wow. A, there's a part. I don't know if you can see it. There's like a little white dot where my hair doesn't grow. That's from a... Everybody has that scar in Cuba. Oh, yeah. I've you seen, know what? Is that what that is? I, and I hope I don't, That's get, from the I hope I don't get canceled for this, but... 
I learned this from an immigrant. They call that the scar of the immigrant because whatever the vac like style of vaccine that was given in South America, it left you with that like indented, yeah. s- like splotch. Was it the was it the one without a needle? So they got like there was a there's this thing that they have. It's like this big. It's like it's it's notable. But they just v, yeah no v, I know he has one. V I know I've one. seen it. I've seen it before. But it's like they go and I don't know if this is the thing that they use. But it's like a it's a system that uses ultra high air pressure I think and it just kind of shoots the vaccine under your skin without using a needle to inject you. I don't remember how. It okay. Yeah. How, but I've, how old I've are seen you? It before. I actually don't even know if I actually even have it. Do you have the scar? I don't think so. I don't think I ever got that vaccine. Wow, you were like an early adopter anti-vaxxer, eh? (laughs) (laughs) My my girlfriend has it, yeah. Yeah. Where's she from? She's from Cuba, too. Were you born there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's, but it's a, it's a thing. It's like, yeah, no, I've seen it. I didn't know that was why. Most, most Latin American people here in Miami who Uh grew up elsewhere, they have that scar. And it's not like an ugly scar or anything, but it's just a s- part of your skin that's yeah. indented. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a little like yeah. Yeah, right I've, there. I've seen that all over. Mm-hmm. I wonder what. The- <laughs> Are you Mexican? No. It kind of <laughs> it kind of sounds like what you're saying though, because it's a bigger surface area. Yeah. So well, apparently it's kind of painful too, and I I don't think they use it here, but it was used a long time ago, so maybe they kept it around for some reason. Why it happens? Oh yeah, that, well that would explain it. Yeah, yeah. No. Um. But to get back to the point that we were talking about originally, the McGregor thing, um, so the rape charge, right? Okay, that was the big one. And are you hacking the mainframe database, George? What's going on there? Shut up for oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is the accuser's account of the events. Okay. I don't know if you've read it. I've read it. I've done the deep dive into it. Yeah. What, they, what she says is that the NBA staff, mm-hmm. the Miami Heat staff, and McGregor's personal security unit all worked in cahoots to separate this lady from her friend, bring her into a bathroom where McGregor started making out with her. Mm-hmm. She then told him she has to use the bathroom, so he let her go pee. He then bursts into the stall and demands oral sex, which she provides from her own account for whatever reason. And then eventually they come out of the, the stall and then he pins her against the wall. He attempts to sodomize her. I'm sorry if this is graphic. Mm. This is not my story. But she's successfully, repeatedly elbows him in the head. The former two weight class. The champ champ. World champ, champion. The champ champ <laughs> of the UFC. She fights him off and then breaks through the McGregor security NBA security and Miami Heat security leaves, forgets her purse, later comes back, asks for her purse, pleads for it. They eventually give it back to her and she goes on her way. And then, so that that's her account, okay? Then what happens is video comes out of her going into this bathroom right and I don't know if you've seen the video yeah but I saw it doesn't really look like his type heavy set lady you know <laughs> I'm sure he has a lot of options it doesn't <laughs> yeah. se- doesn't seem like yeah. the yeah. what he'd be going for sure regardless maybe it could be but it doesn't seem that way so that happens and then a video gets released a few days later where after the account happens, she's hanging out again with McGregor and his entourage. So it's like you just had this supposedly wildly traumatic experience and then there's another video of you hanging out. And a bunch of people came out and said, this is what I think happened. 
And so I what's think that consensus. What I think this think? is a much more viable option, right? McGregor. He's got a little bit of a rap for being a guy who likes cocaine. It Love seems that. as though, according to these people, and I would, I would think this is more plausible right. than what was presented by this lady. Uh-huh. He bought cocaine off of her and didn't want to do it in public because he's like, there's a thousand cameras everywhere, like a million cameras on me at all times. I'm McGregor. I'm the highest paid athlete of all time. But why would he or, buy cocaine off somebody? Who doesn't he has a whole entourage, right? Yeah, that's true. Why wouldn't someone else just do it? Right. That's a good point, and I didn't think about that. So mm. well, now, right. now you got me guessing. But what? All right, go go okay. on. Hey, well, I don't, I mean, don't mean to disrupt. So your that, well, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's a very good point. Well, let's talk about this after. Okay. But what they were saying is. She just went in there. He bought cocaine off of her, and that was that. He wanted to do it in private. He didn't want a thousand cameras around, you know. And that's what happened. And maybe he just wanted to do some coke. Or that she said, "I have it. Would you like to go to the bathroom?" He said, "Okay, let this girl in. I want to use the bathroom." And they did cocaine. That that is more plausible than what I was saying. Maybe he didn't pay her. That was what people said. Also, is that he didn't. Pay her, right. or maybe like and, he's like, oh, my boys got you, like they carry the money type thing. Yeah. So I mean, there's a million plausible things that could have happened, but her account of it seems a bit ludicrous. I think for that to happen in the middle of a public arena in the middle of Miami is he's without not, like a lot of video evidence from security cameras and yada yada yada. Like that seems far fetched. Yeah. You. Th- you think that this guy, right, say what you want about him, where he came from, his antics in the past. He's amassed an enormous amount of wealth. He's He is an intelligent guy. He can't be that dumb. No, he is an intelligent guy. It's like just because somebody's not formally educated doesn't mean they're not intelligent, right? Yeah. I think he's an intelligent guy. Definitely. And he is not so stupid – to be like, you know where a good rape place is? <laughs> the NBA Finals. Right. What? Where I just knocked out the mascot. Where I all got all this heat on me because I just knocked out the mascot. <laughs> like, it's that's not what happened, guys. So what, ha- what was the result of this whole thing? Like, did he settle with her or is it just over with? Well, they, they sent an initial demand letter. Uh, McGregor's attorneys didn't even respond. They were just like, no, like we're not even going to yeah, entertain this. this is fucking nuts. Then they put out a bunch of public statements, did all this stuff, claiming th- – I, I guess they filed a lawsuit. And I don't, I don't know where it's going to go from there. But it oh just – you know, it's th- – There's going to be no evidence. The judge will throw it out probably. It's a cash grab. You know what was the, sure. what, the most gangster move in a scenario like this? When Justin Bieber got wrongly accused of this? Yeah. Uh. Like some girls, like I can't remember what, what exactly it was. You know, guys, go do your own research on this. It's it's easy to Google. We don't need George to pull this one up. But you know, some girl like charged him or accused him of rape and was suing him for like ten million dollars. And then he countersued her for like a hundred million for defamation and like all these other things. And then she was just like. Oops. And just withdrew her case. (laughs) Oops, I don't have any evidence. And it was like, dude, this is going to happen to these guys all the time, especially like... Unless they live in a fucking bubble. There's been a little bit of pushback now, like with the whole... From the whole Me Too thing. But there was a point where it was just like, believe all women. Do you remember that? Yeah, It was like a hashtag that was going around. And it's like... But then some people like All there was them, though? yeah, but there was a lot that came out and they should have been believed because they were talking about stuff like, you know, they, that was when they exposed Epstein and uh, right. Harvey Weinstein. Like there were some disgusting fucking people out there. Like Bill Gates got that's the reason Bill Gates got yeah. divorced. But like, they but what, the thing shit. is like, but then some people co-opted it and then they started using that kind of believability factor you know like well everybody's gonna believe me if i say this and then they start making up insane shit like this and they try to sue people left mm-hmm. and right amber well, heard right great example being a shitty person is not gender exclusive no. shitty people ex- exist 
in all genders. What was the what was the funny story here that when she paid Johnny Depp the settlement of like a million dollars? There's some I think she he, ended up he, paying him a million dollars. He donated it to charities. He, he, I think he won, he won like ten, and she won two, and he she owed, like it was something like that. She owed him a huge amount Some of money. Stupid thing. The courts determined it was unreasonable for her to pay that amount of money, so they said we're going to let you pay a way smaller amount. I think it ended up being a million, and then he just gave the million away to charity. What a fuck yeah. you! What a fuck you move, dude. But that was that was an important case because it was the first very public case where, you know. A woman wasn't just completely taken at her word, and the man was just com- his life was ruined because of these accusations. Like yeah, he lost a lot of opportunities in the the lead up to that trial. Oh, he got kicked out of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise and the Fantastic Beast franchise, both of which, sorry guys, good movies, good movies. That Fantastic Beast series was a great. Spin-off series, actually, I really loved it. He was the main character, uh, that like the villain in mm-hmm. that, and then you know, he was the fucking he was, he was, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow for all those years, and Disney didn't bring him back because of the accusations she was making. I will say this: whether he was right or wrong, like he could have been completely wrong. I think America still would have sided with him because of the way he presented himself on the stand. He was so lovable yeah and so funny like if he was just acting give him an oscar because (laughs) that was phenomenal dude dude every every single like he was like playing with attorneys in a way that like you i I don't think you're supposed to be allowed to do you remember when yeah yeah, there was a couple examining them and the mega pint thing he goes a mega pint (laughs) i poured a large glass of wine yes (laughs) or like uh, when the guy kept saying did i read this correctly he goes he said, yes, yes, yes. He goes, you continue to read them correctly. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he was just, he was being condescending in a way that was playful and like so fun for everybody to Well, a lot of it was probably making the jury, I, I think it was a jury, right? It was a legal strategy. Yeah. It was yeah. Like he wanted to become more likable, sure. But he but was like, he was also probably being himself. Not even just that, to show that the other attorneys are incapable. Yeah. Ooh. Or, uh, Ooh. Not incapable. The word you're looking for is incompetent. Yeah. Incompetent. Yes. Right, because they were just asking dumb questions. There, there. I think there's definitely a legal strategy for it. Which, I mean, I didn't go to law school, so. I'm also, not how funny was it that like his his lawyer, the lady, was just you know she was like an attractive lady, and then just blew up. Everyone was like, it didn't matter what she said. They were just yeah. like, oh, dude, she's she, killing it. It's just they like, both. You know what? I think they did the world a service. He just had a charismatic team. They put a good looking chick in front of them, and he was right. And he was on the right side of this, and like they exposed batshit craziness. Listen, dude, if you ever, in any scenario, get in an argument. And what you think the appropriate form of recourse is to drop a deuce in the other person's bed? <laughs> I think you automatically lose. I mean, that argument. What a uh, what? what a <laughs> do you imagine? <laughs> no, I can't. Imagine getting in a fight at home. Just like that's the that's the response. Like, wow. It's also not expecting that. <laughs> it's also your bed as well, yeah, which yeah, is right? strange. It's like, well, you gotta throw the bed out, obviously. Yeah, you got to restart that whole process. Jesus, but yeah, the point was, I think the McGregor thing—it's a money grab. Seems like it. Like most of those things, yeah, are. And uh, you know, if that is the case, you know, if I'm reading it wrong, I'll do my apology on the podcast in the future. But it doesn't seem like that's the case, and I bet you this goes away really quick. I'm sure. I'm sure, and uh, wow. We went places today, man. Man, I feel good about that one. We covered a lot. Thanks, guys. I cool appreciate up. you turning, tuning in again. <laughs> the, this is going to be the conclusion of the submarine saga, so uh, hopefully hopefully we could tie this up in a nice pretty bow for everyone. Yeah, well, and if you haven't yet, please go look at the comment section of our uh, our two two or three posts that we did on the, the uh, whole – Submersible and, topic. It's very entertaining. And definitely go watch James Cameron's uh, documentary on, on Amazon Prime. It's a challenger deep. Oh, you can also get it for free on YouTube. Ooh, 
Ooh. That's what where we were watching here. Don't miss it. Yeah, yeah, it's actually just it's cool. It's just fun to watch. Like, yeah, no controversy. Just the guy yes. doing things correctly and having fun <laughs> and not having fun dying. and getting a Rolex deal. Yeah, sick. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Deuces. Deuces.